Now then, Taryn, the, the fantastic Taryn-ator is holding the camera and she's a bit freaked out because the big bridge you see above you is making a cracking noise while it's part to do with the fact that it's 40 something degrees today or 30 something degrees today but I just want to show you this and I don't know if Taryn can zoom down here but this is a fantastic bridge this is uh, Lethbridge's eye level bridge and it's, uh, it's the oldest and highest and longest bridge of its construction anywhere in the world and it's a remarkable piece of engineering really it's a bit it's a bit isn't bad Kingdom Brunel in some respects but it's uh, it's uh, well, not as old as him I guess uh, and it was founded here to run the CPR well it wasn't that then but the railway all the way through Lethbridge previously it went all the way down there and over a shorter bit of thing but they made a more direct route and if you stand here I don't know if Taryn can move I don't, can you move down just a little bit and you look down here it's almost like something out of a film with all these wonderful straight lines and things anyway I'm not here to talk about the bridge I'm here to talk and Taryn's going we're going to do a walk and talk now this is a bit like uh, like one of them things they have in doctor's shows we'll walk and talk and hopefully Taryn won't fall in the number of holes that there are underneath here but I'm here today because as I mentioned in some of my posts elsewhere and I mentioned on some of the Facebook group forums that Captain Finn is up in Cap he's having some work done and some warranty work well actually he's been up there and it's not been done it's a bit of a drama really but uh, just have a look at that bridge now look at that isn't that fantastic outstanding lovely piece of engineering I'd like to tell you more about it really but what I've come here to show you today is this because this is what they've given me as a courtesy vehicle this is a this is a Range Rover Velar uh, and it's currently in its raised suspension mode I don't know why I put it in here because it would come up here and come up here in a mini wouldn't you but anyway um, I thought I'd do a very quick review while Taryn's nursing the sore shoulder she's had a bit of a tattoo and uh, I'd come up and do uh, a bit of a look like a review but one of dramas is <laughs> So all my recording gear sat in Land Rover up in up in Calgary. So I've had, I've had a sort of I've had a sort of tell Tyrant give me a bit of an hand really because I can't I can't do it on my own. Um, anyway, so what we've got here is we've got this Velar, which is a P400, and one of the reasons that I think there's something wrong with uh, my Defender is because having driven a couple of P400s before. Uh, they don't handle like my defender do, or more accurately my defender doesn't handle like these do so uh while we've got this here i thought i'd just give you a bit of a show about what it's like well you can see it's a very pretty car i mean taryn uh, we spoke about this taryn doesn't like them in any other color than black i quite like that gunmetal gray color they've got going on but this is the black version this is their r dynamic model it's got 22 inch wheels on it and it's got uh, a bunch of fancy tech on the inside uh, it is quite small, Taryn and I have both noted that it feels a bit sort of constrained, she said that she always feels like it's sort of coming in on her a bit, the car, because it, the, there's a big slopey windscreen, it's much more like a, a Range Rover Sport I suppose, but it's very good whatever it is in terms of ride and comfort and sort of um, everything being at your hands, which it isn't the case in the in the Defender I've mentioned before and complained before about the gear stick being over there on the Defender and no paddles make, makes it very difficult to actually that reminds me I've just read something about the the Land Rover owner international magazine's review of the sort of comparison of the Defender and the the Discovery and and in it the guy says I own a Defender and I don't think you need these paddles well the guy's an idiot if he has if he's never been if he's never driven it in the mountains or if he's been and driven it in the mountains or in the snow he'd realize just exactly how important it is to be able to change gear rather than do this all the time up and down it's a nightmare but this car doesn't have that problem Taryn and I did actually drive into the mountains with it when we first got it and it was champion and uh, the, the gear stick is just right there and it's perfect and it's got the paddle so changing up and down uh, for hills and, and, and for corners is, is, is much better what there is is a shortage of space in the back and I'm going to let this out and the Magnificent is going to uh, come out but as you can see 
there's not a lot of space. Jib, oh, and you can see with the hound of the Baskervilles in, and the hound of the basketballs, sit. Uh, you'll see that there's not actually a lot of room in here. Now, Jip occasionally likes to pop his head up, uh, and he likes to sort of uh, to sort of um, sit up basically and, and stare out the windows. But he can't do that because the windows are sort of forwards, and and as you close this, it sort of traps his. Well, not trap his head. That's not the right thing, is it? But you can see it's, he's pulled out the rubber things here for the for whatever this thing is. Um, because that sort of gets in his way as well and we've had to fold this forwards because if it stays in its normal position it sort of when the door closes it traps his head and it's quite bad so uh, there's not a lot of room for his fluffy nibs there's no room underneath here at all uh, there's just there is there just isn't uh, there is of course tie down ropes which is is very handy and you do get this small pocket here which is handy here I imagine that because this is the fancier model uh, behind here is a fuse box and I would guess that on other models this is only a guess there's other sorts of storage and they do come with curry hooks which Taryn and I have found useful when we picked up some plants so there's a couple of these and you can hang your, your bags and things in it and that's actually a pretty good design we do like those curry hooks <laughs> that is the jip come out jip oh uh, so these curry hooks are very handy uh, I do find these electric tailgates a bit frustrating because uh, when you're in a bit of a rush like I always am and you put the dog in and you're raising the tailgate and then putting it down there's a bit of a pause you sort of at it twice once if you touch it once as it's going up it'll stop it and then there's a bit of a pause you've got to tap it to reset it and then hit it again to make it come down it's not quite as easy as just shutting the tailgate on the defender but uh, you know it has its own benefits doesn't it I do like the fact that this corner is considerably more out of the way than it is on a Discovery 5 which comes right down at a point and is much lower so in terms of getting the tailgate out of the way this is a bit better the inside's very very nice they have these kinds of faux union flag affairs in uh, and the same is on the seats if you look at the seats here there's the faux uh, union flag aeration pockets in here it's got very nice seats, massage seats, uh, which Taryn likes a lot. The kids have complained because it doesn't have very good cup holders. Um, so I'm not quite sure what the kids said about that, but uh, they, whatever it is that they were complaining about, these cup holders aren't satisfactory, although they look pretty good to me. There is a fairly reasonable amount of storage space and pockets in the side for the kids to shove in the, the bubble gum or the bits of rocks or whatever it is that they collect. Um, and I understand that this isn't a family vehicle I'm not suggesting that this is but you have to understand that my reviews are quite balanced and, and you know if you're buying this and you do have a couple of kids these things are important I mean if you're just a, a business guy racing around then it doesn't matter all flash and no cash and all that sort of stuff but the passenger side is spacious although the rake of the windshield does really bring in the, 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 the front and make you feel a little impacted a little sort of crowded it's got these wonderful massage seats on that Taryn thinks are absolutely the biz. And I can't say why not. Uh, tops of the doors are nice, but they're a bit high. I'll show you in a second. When you sit in it, you end up with your arm like this. Now, Taryn, if you can just stay here, I'll pop round the other side. Now, what we have here, you see, is a great vehicle sitting position. You are missing this in the Defender. Uh, this the, the armrest here is a bit well not the armrest but the window is a bit high and it's a bit uncomfortable to leave yourself there uh, that said of course everything as i've mentioned is right within fingertips so you are able to shove these forwards to give you a better armrest position uh, you are able to uh, if i can just turn this fan off there you go you are able to touch all of these functions here these functions are your heater functions and car functions massage seat seat heaters and raise position and off-road position and technology for your four-wheel drive system but they're right here do 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 you can leave your arm on the armrest and the gear shift is right in position the flappy paddles are right here uh, and the controls for your four-wheel drive systems are right here as well everything is much better position than the defender now i understand that this system here is something that you that you would find on the discovery 5 certainly on the new range rover sport 
and the reason they've provided you that large space in the in the defender is so that you can have that walk through and that jump seat which is is usable i suppose but the downsides is that the gear stick up here means that it's not really usable in the mountains when you want it to dump a bunch of gears to go around a corner it's out of the way and this gear stick is far more favorable when you can just tap it forwards and tap it backwards as are these paddles there's a great sunroof uh, that you get also in the defender here you get these two surround speakers if you opt for this uh, this level of trim and, and the, the surround uh, stereo system uh, this sunroof makes the car feel a lot brighter and when you pull the blind across it isn't actually a full blind it's not like a thick blind it's more like a mesh uh, which is okay because it stops heat coming in but it doesn't help you with the sound i am imagining that some sort of roof rack must be available uh, and if it is this isn't going to help you keep the sound right because it's only a sort of a sort of a blind much 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 better heating system than in the defender the defender is currently in calgary because one of the problems i've got with it is you can't put heat to the feet you just can't put it there and you've got uh, uh heat always coming out of the dashboard against the window and you can't isolate it from there which is a problem because in the winter time this is a bit complicated but in the winter time when it's snowing you actually don't want the heat on the window because what happens is the snow melts but minus 40 is so cold it overpowers whatever kind of heat you can put on the window and it melts and then it freezes up and now you've got ice on the window which you can't wipe off with the with the wiper blade so having that heat perpetually on the window is actually problematic because your wipers start to ice up and then you're not your visibility is reduced what you want in, when it's minus 30 or 40 and it's snowing or sleeting is you well sleeting is always snowing or freezing rain is you want to be able to isolate that window completely and put the heat on your feet or in the rest of the cabin and you can't do that uh with the defender but you can in here you've got perfect heat feeding feet heating fit, heat feeding feet heating um and you can you know you can get your feet hot or you can get them cold but you can't you know you can't do that in the defender so whatever it is that they've done here uh with the gadgetry inside actually does work in a way that it doesn't in the defender and, and that's sort of important it's going to be almost impossible for taryn to show you but he's got a heads up display one of my favorite things on this vehicle ever it displays the off-road information the gear selection the speed of the the zone you're traveling through uh, as well as a bunch of other things the display on the dash is clear you have all of the information that you need presented to you and like the defender you're able to program it with whatever kinds of uh you know arrangement that you want whether it be one dial or two dials maps or four-wheel drive information uh this of course does have the um the uh adaptive cruise control which my defender doesn't but could have if somebody would turn it on um and then of course we do have pivy here uh with the usual pivy functions and and all of the rest of the stuff that goes with it now down here this is the dash that i was talking to you about this is one of the better uh position dashes i think it wouldn't work with the defender i understand that but having these additional having this additional workspace uh for dash information certainly helps a lot when you're off-road because it gives you the option uh to very um clearly identify what it is that's going on because you get your four-wheel drive information up here as well as your terrain response information down here and that is perfect because it gives you that extra screen to display your information but the trim's nice of course it's a range rover so you get that extra level of quality that extra level of trim you get these beautiful sort of uh, dash leather uh, stitching affairs this better quality fuzzy black lining on the on the head lining uh these don't slide out the the sun visor don't slide out but partly because the door is so small you don't actually miss that um and i really think that the visibility is uh, pretty good the speakers are fantastic obviously this has got the super duper stereo system in it and they are very very good uh, king to compared to my defender but i've only got the mid-level stound system in the defender so i'm not comparing like for like here and it would be unfair to do so uh, visibility is impaired a little bit by these sorts of funny styling they've got going on and it, and it sort of rises up the back and it takes a lot of space out of your mirrors so it's very difficult to see much really um and uh over and above that i mean driving wise it's beautiful it's, it's even though it's got these 22 inch rims on it is actually quite smooth 
there's a little bit of bumps when you go over the bumps it's not as comfortable in town because it's got that dynamic stability on the on the shock absorbers and that means it's a little harsh in town but get it on the mountains and this really does open up to be a beautiful car we drove it up towards golden the other the other day uh, which is right in the mountains and we hit some very bad bends and up and downs and bridges and everything and it was absolutely it was like driving on a roller coaster it was beautifully smooth in a way that the defender isn't and i know that there's a lot more goes on in this in terms of ride comfort and, and range rover sort of adopted suspension but the drive was far superior more responsive i don't get those issues with the engine that i did um with uh, with finn or don't with finn i mean i don't own this this is just a courtesy car so uh, i don't have those rev and go issues the the engine is much better matched to the transmission well, this does 27 miles to the gallon in the way that the, the defender does 16 if we try very hard and very nicely um and through the mountain passes this was a lot more responsive in terms of shifting gears and and changing its gear protocol f to match the environment um it does have this one two three lurchy issue which has been reported by by many people that have the p400s and has been reported by the gas owners of the discovery vibes and that's almost like a mapping issue it's almost like it holds on to first too much then jumps into second and then automatically assumes that when you go around a corner you want first again and then throws it into first but of course doing so throws the revs to about 3200 rpm it, one friend of mine uh, who's complained about this says that it's a bit like Adam, Adam Wor Worthington, I think his name is. He says it's a bit like you're sat in a car being driven by a first year learner uh, of an auto, as a manual transmission. It's very lurchy, you know, the clutch response isn't there. They hold onto it, hold onto it, and then you dip the clutch, and of course, you get that big release of power. And that's what the car's doing. First, second, and third on these eight speeds isn't right on this engine, and it's not right uh, on, on some of the gas engines with the D5s. Uh, but it does seem to be much better on those lower down uh, rpm engines like the the d the diesels the big diesel uh, td6 and then again the the t the d300 d250 and d240s much better all around um now i'm just going to pause here and jump out as i show you a little bit more of the front uh, and then uh, i suppose that'll be it for the day i guess now from this angle here you can just see a bit more of the bridge casting its shadow on the far banks of the coulee there but this is a beautiful example of how high this is it's 300 feet in the bottom this bridge here it's not very high at all but down in the bottom there's 300 feet further down and it stands majestically if you go down into the bottom it almost seems like the uh what's that big thing in paris called the eiffel tower um he said well, that's my Eiffel Tower impression. <laughs> uh, beautiful styling, of course. They have made proper provision here. If you can see, this is for the uh, for the um, uh, block eaters that we have to have over here. My Defender doesn't have any kind of provision for that, and the addition of the Defender block eater to the bumper here sort of feels like a bit of an add-on, and it's, and it's an add-on in a way that it shouldn't be. But if Taryn looks in here, you can see that right through here, you can't see through. To the to the radiator cooling because it has these louvers which the defender has for wading and other such things but this also aids fast start and when you start the car obviously it checks the temperature and then it opens these louvers to let cooling into the engine and that's a great design um, radar here for adaptive cruise control most defenders have that adaptive cruise control um, but they need to be activated and this is another one of those JLR lies i suppose is a better way to put it because they tell you that you can't update them but behind the sensors here on the defender you have all of the radar technology you need for adaptive cruise control even if it's not selected and you can just activate it by adjusting the software in the in the in the in the car and that's important because when you take it to Land Rover, they say it can't be done. If you haven't spec'd it from new, you can't, you can't do it. And that's not right. They're lying to you. It can be done. They just want to charge you a lot of money for it. Anyway, you get these beautiful, uh, beautiful lines on this, on this uh, Range Rover Velar. This is, if Taryn steps back and just look at the, the wheel here, this is in its raised position. And you know, to be frank, for even though it's a racy, sporty car kind of Tourer with no low transmission, uh this is good like it's good ground clearance you know it's not i'll just show close here it's not terrible 
It's not anywhere near like the Land Rover Defender, nor as good as the Discovery, but it's not meant to be. And if you wanted a smaller car for your family, our kids said that they quite liked it. They just thought it was a bit small for Jip, which it is, and they didn't, <laughs> and they didn't like the cup holders in the back, which is, I suppose, if you're a North American child used to these kinds of luxuries, uh, those are the things. Oh, the other thing is, what did they say about it? Oh, they can't climb, that was it, that was a very important thing the kids brought up. Now there is a roof rack here, you can see this has got roof rails, so you can add these cross rails, uh, and that would help you to put some, you know, I don't know, like a box on the top of bike racks or whatever it is that you want to do. But, like our kids said, the, dis the Defender has a proper roof rack and they can sit on it and climb up the ladder, and apparently that was the, the second best thing other than Smokies that the, that the campfire from the last camp was able to play on the ladder. So there are some downsides, but if you've got a small family and you, you only do a little bit of camping or you do some road tripping, I actually think this is a very, very good car. And I think it's unfair that it's had the kinds of uh, negative comments that he does that the VLR is pointless he's not pointless for those people that don't need a low range transmission don't go uh, over terribly rough terrain and, and perhaps just want to have uh, you know a Land Rover with Land Rover four wheel drive system and a bit of a bit of comfort and, and, and luxury I think it's a perfect vehicle and the resale value we have noted is very good when we looked at considering one very briefly uh, we found them over a couple of years old 2018 I think we found them at $50,000 Canadian which isn't a lot of money for a car that has all of this tech anyway that's about all I've got time to tell you really this is just a quick review from me and Jip who's uh, hello Jip there you are lad so thank you very much for tuning in thanks very much for listening to the review I hope this information is useful to you uh, if you've got any questions please ask them below and otherwise we will tune into the next video and see you next time Cheerio!